Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. About 800 years ago, a very extraordinary monk entered a monastery in France, a man who would one day be known as St. Bernard of Clairvaux. Like some of the Irish monks about 600 years before him, God brought him to the unitive stage of prayer through a very deep life of prayer and penance. And like some of these Irish monks 600 years before him, God used him all over the globe as a great missionary. Nowadays, we often, because of the scandals, our view of priests is basically give me the sacraments and go back to your rectory and don't hurt anybody. But traditionally, this was the view of the priesthood. The priests were to live all three of the moon are the gifts in their life, which is teach, sanctify, and govern. These are the three gifts given to the priesthood. Nowadays, many people say, well, Father, thank you very much for the Eucharist. We wouldn't have the Eucharist if it weren't for you. Okay, that's true, and that's a nice compliment. But actually, it's, that's referring to the sanctify part. To sanctify means we give you the sacraments. But again, tr traditionally, historically, we priests were supposed to live, teach, sanctify, and govern. Nowadays, I have a theory the govern part is given to bishops and the teach part is given to lay groups. Think of how many lay groups are out there that most dioceses expect to be teaching all of their people and all these programs. One program has 600,000 people learning through it, and it's a video program in parishes. It's not bad, but it's almost entirely lay run. Well, God's original plan for the priesthood is lived out in people like St. Bernard of Clairvaux. This man zipped back and forth between secular rulers and popes, informing them what to do, to the point that Warren Carroll, if you ever read his 3,000-page history of the Catholic Church, he gives more time to St. Bernard of Clairvaux than probably any saint. He gives about 80 or 90 pages in his book to one saint because, I think it was the 12th century, Bernard of Clairvaux was simply the most singular influencer of history, not only church history, but all of European history in the 12th century. I mean, apply that today. Can you imagine a priest flying back and forth between Washington, D.C. and Rome, Washington, D.C. and Rome, informing the Pope and the President how to rule? Can you imagine that? This is how trusted St. Bernard of Clairvaux was. This shows why we traditional Catholics do not believe in the separation of church and state. This is entirely lived out in St. Bernard of Clairvaux because of the heavy, heavy, heavy influence he had on all of European politics in the 12th century. Why? Because someone that close to God has the right to inform the state how this should be run because that has an influence in the salvation of souls. This is why we believe that. Also, I would argue that he is, as far as saints of the second millennium, one of the three greatest Marian saints. I would say the three greatest Marian saints of the second millennium in reverse order is St. Maximilian Kolbe, uh, chronological reverse order, not greatness. St. Maximilian Kolbe, St. Louis de Montfort, and St. Bernard of Clairvaux. His love and devotion of Mary was just supersonic uh, beyond many, many people and really brought it to a new level, and he brought it to a new level theologically, not just devotionally. Finally, I might argue that um, he's the great patron of any of you who've had miscarriages. You know, um, it is unanimous among all the popes and doctors of the church that miscarried and aborted babies go to limbo, not to heaven. Uh, again, it's unanimous among all the writers I've read that uh, aborted and miscarried babies go to limbo. It's a place of great paradise, but you don't have the beatific vision. St. Bernard of Clairvaux is the only non-modern who entertained the possibility of that baby before dying being given perfect contrition or the gift of faith by proxy, basically baptism by desire, through one of the parents. So if any of you have uh, uh, miscarriages in your past, he can be your great patron of holding out some hope that perhaps uh, those children have the beatific vision.